This conference will now be recorded. So before we start off about automation, so I just want to know your insights and your views about automation before we start up something about automation. What is it? What is it purpose about? Just I want to know your views with respect to test automation. It can be anyone, no matter what. It's right or wrong, doesn't matter, but you just need to talk about your views towards automation and what do you know about automation? What is your understanding towards automation? So automation, you can reduce the time of uh, testing time. So if you use manual techniques, then it is taking uh, much time to reduce automation. You can reduce the time and we will uh, fix the bugs as early as possible. Okay, and how about others? Basically, return of investment would be high for automation. Okay, can you repeat your point, please? I couldn't get you. Deepak? Return of investment would be high for automation uh, because okay. uh, which we rerun, uh, we can run it uh, directly from automation. Okay. Okay. How about others? It is useful for repetitive steps. It reduces man uh, power and uh, time so that we will not have to do repetitive steps again and again by the help of automation. Mm -hmm. And others? It is useful for uh, doing regression uh, testing. OK. Yeah, it reduces okay. manual effort. OK. And? And anyone, anything else? That's it. Like, could we consider this as the final output, like final call from everyone that this is the in, your views and insights about automation? So, okay. So, what will be, I will be sharing my screen right now. Just let me know if my screen visible or not. It's okay. So now today we will be just discussing about the intro of automation and how automation is important. Why we are we why are organizations these days were making good and good amount of investments with respect to automation? We'll just go through it and briefly about it. Just just a second. So uh, before starting about automation, I would like and whatever points that everyone has said about automation was absolutely clear. Your views and insights about automation was very clear. Some said that it will reduce the time. Some said it will use for performing the regression. Some said it was the rate of investment for automation is pretty high. And it's and it's so uh, those points were really helpful. So uh, before we start out something, I just want to know that who are new to test new to testing. Who are new to testing among this group? Who are new to testing or who are new I to test new. automation? Okay, you're new I to testing. New. Okay. Uh, I'm new as well. Okay, okay, thank you. So how many of them? Okay, okay. Now uh, okay. Rest all are into testing department, I consider. So no worries, no worries. Mm, we can develop that test mind of a mindset of a tester slowly during our course and during our journey. So that is not a problem. So the first question that we have discussed about is why automation testing is important. As you have all said, I would like to collect all the points that it is useful for uh, multi regression testing. It's useful for performing the test case, executing of test cases again and again if the test application is working fine. Adding to that, I would like to add one more point that if you want to do some sort of cross-browser testing, what do you mean by cross-browser testing? If you want to execute the same, if you want to execute the same case test cases on an application that is working in Chrome or that is working in Firefox or that is working in Internet Explorer, then also automation will be coming into picture a lot. And 
suppose you want to test your applications in multiple infrastructures like today in uh, in the real time scenario what happens means you will have to execute your test cases in uh, your local machine once you have to execute the, the test cases in your client virtual machine and sometimes you might have to test execute your test cases you might have to test your application in one of the distributed environments also so this is a way this is a challenge for a manual tester to do this kind of redundant activities so in order to avoid such things the companies are these days investing into automation but investment into automation doesn't only suffice the need in we as engineers will have to upskill our programming bit of a programming knowledge and a bit of our testers bit, take the help of manual testers to prepare a suit that is well established and well organized so that we can reduce the defects improve the improve the scope of our testing clear everyone clear everyone yeah yes yeah cool so now what i want to do is now hope this pictorial representation determines how the life of a manual tester versus automation was auto versus automated tester will be there this is under the condition that when the application is reaching go live this is how a life of a manual tester comes because we have tons of test cases to be tested he has to see how the application is behaving in this environment that environment he has to check in uat he has to check in go live environment he has to check in preprod environment simultaneously in one go and as soon as he runs out of them the quality of testing reduces but whereas when you make your things automated you can always do multitasking like your scripts will scripts will do the basic sanity testing or smoke testing or someone else said the regression testing and we can do the test cases that are not covered by automation in multiple environments that makes our life simple easy going easy going and you can have easily have a cup of tea and relax trust me i mean when a proper automation suit is built definitely the load on a manual tester is going to be very less and one more point i would like to tell you is automation testing is aiding the manual testing team is aiding the company process is aiding the whole testing team automation team cannot ever replace the manual testing team at all because without manual testers automation testing can never be cannot be performed because they are the ones who will give us the functional knowledge functional kt etc so is this is this point clear the, because there is a myth saying that once the once the automation is done there is no need of manual testers that's completely a completely wrong and that's utter utter bullshit about it clear yeah? yes so any doubts anything so far that you would like to ask it's clear as of now okay cool. now let us see what are the advantages of automation testing first of all as you all know it is reliable reusable fast cost reduction better quality software compressive comprehensiveness means it is able to uh, it is able to cover each and every feature of your application programmable programmable means what provides the ability to program sophisticated tests that brings out hidden information from the application like it is it's like a plug and play feature like if your programming skills are top notch you can make your work so much programmable that it you can really pull out the bugs of the application like you always try to you always try to hit the application continuously so the, sometimes you will get different kinds of errors so you can also see what kind of errors are coming from the application when you performing different different kinds of actions on that button clear reliability develops over time on automation because the reliability of automation script cannot be built in a single single sprint or a two sprints or something else it will be built over the time because each in each and every sprint whatever issues that the manual testing team encounters we have to inculcate those kind of things in our automation scripts also clear and the concept of reusability also will be built over time because whatever test cases whatever test cases that you have given it should be running on different different versions of application they'll be like okay i want to run 
uh, run my test cases on so and so a release of the application i want to run my test cases on b and another release of the application you want to come do a delta of how the what is the performance of the application for the particular release a and the particular release b so automation helps us in determining that analysis and statistics and reports and automation testing is fast means because when you are when you are scripting with selenium trust me the script execution is so fast that it will finish in a blink of an eye you will not even realize that the test case testing is completed or the click action has been completed or the what do you call or you have entered the text into the text box it's so fast trust me it's so fast and and what how the quality how the word better quality software comes into picture so better quality software means what suppose you have for an, you have a couple of regression test cases as some mentioned by my by our friend deepak he has told that uh, we can prepare a automation regression suit suppose if your automation regression suit is built properly via all your automation scripts a manual person may take suppose four days to finish the regression suit because whereas if you build the proper automation suit it might take a day to finish it and you can use the remaining three days to execute the scenarios that has not been covered by automation so a better quality software is not only delivering a better quality it is also expanding our range of scenarios where we can do some boundary value analysis testing you can do some kind of load testing you can do some kind of stress testing that you want to clear by the way automation testing is non functional testing guys it's not a functional testing it's not part of functional testing clear yeah, yeah. cost reduction means with the help of better automation skills and better automation framework into picture instead of having 20 manual testers for a single project you can have five manual testers for a single project and you can have two crazy two crazy ultimate automation engineers where they can easily suffice your things and at the like at the end of the day as soon as the project like from the starting phase till the ending phase if you see the cost spent on the testing team will, will be very less trust me if a proper automation suit is put into picture and if they if they develop the scripts accordingly as per the management requirements and as per the manual testers requirements then definitely the from a service delivery point of view he will see a very good reduction in cost percentage cost terms in respect to testing that has been because they already spend i mean by the time the money is given by the customer to the service delivery team like service delivery team is the team that handles the finances of any project so generally they spend a lot of money on development They spend a lot of money on the DevOps and the infrastructure. These are the two areas they spend a lot of money. So, in couple with that, if they have a huge testing team resources that needs to be put into picture, then obviously, obviously the service delivery team would be scratching their heads. How do you save money? How do you get a better return of this project? Clear? So, clear, everyone? Yes. yes. Okay. and one more point i would like to and is this this repeatable suppose you have a amazon application now what you want to do you want to create some five different you want to create five five different five new accounts of a amazon account manually doing doesn't give you that much of a joy or happiness trust me because while creating account the for two times you will be tired you will be like okay i'm feeling too lazy to create account how do i do the remaining thing so if you write a proper automation script to say the example is amazon account it can be anything else tomorrow in your application like if you want to make okay better we'll take this example if you want to make 100 payments for a particular account so why if it, it is really impossible to to make 100 payments via manually manually you can't do 100 payments you will not have that energy or feel to do it so when you write a proper automation script for it you can perform those set of repeatable actions like make this make this payment for this account for n number of times so automation scripts keep on making the payment for n number of times the n is the number that you define for clear everyone yes yes sir you can call okay okay you can call me rahul that is not a problem so as i have discussed the as i have discussed the points just now i have discussed more points in the previous session so hope everyone knows the speed wider test coverage and one more thing with automation is if your script is so proper it will be on queue it will you should always remember that your if you have a very great automation scripts it will be right on queue and it will not miss even a single error 
it may like you know overlook manual testing team might miss that error but automation automation scripts that has been developed will not miss at all it'll be right on cue it will be right on cue only when your scripts are so robust precise and it has the ability to cover different different errors clear and thus these certain conditions only your automation scripts looks looks accurate clear and as i told you about resource autom optimization frees testing resources from the test execution of software builds that are frequently given by the development team so what happens means what happens means and when you are working in a project that is in development phase hope everyone who are already into manual testing you might be getting a build like sometimes bi weekly sometimes daily you get a build and you have to execute smoke regression on the uh, on the daily releases yes or no for the people who are already into manual testing yes so it is a very big challenge right for you to do daily for you to do the smoke and regression and sanity on a daily on a daily build up application yeah correct so if you have a great automation framework in place and if you will put that uh, i mean if you if they can if they can execute right after the build is deployed then definitely it reduces a lot of work on the manual testing team and manual testing team jobs will be like focusing on the bugs that is being deployed into the server and they'll just test that bug and just they'll do some small sanity flow to ensure that application is stable enough or not clear Clear, everyone. Yes, sir. Yes. Uh, so, any doubts, anything so far? Would you like to ask? The floor is open. No doubts so far. I mean, you can ask anything like related automation. That's not a problem. Okay. so these are our some statistics that have drawn no obviously from some some of the websites only but this uh, this stats sounded something realistic like how many how many hours do we spend in a manual testing versus the automation testing on a smoke suit that is having some 15 cases on a sanity suit that is having some 50 cases on a partial regression suit like you can see a build regression suit or you can see a high priority regression suit all this comes in the partial regression and another full full regression suit on a scale of 1000 on a scale of 1000 test cases on a scale of 250 cases on a scale of so san 58 cases for sanity i mean on a scale of 50 cases for sanity on a scale of 15 cases for smoke so if you see for the smoke and sanity it will not have much impact like considering the team size is around 10 members assuming that the team size is 10 members so definitely what will happen if you want to do a smoke suit that is of 15 cases they'll easily finish in 2 hours and automation scripts does not exactly in 20 not exactly in 20 or 30 minutes you can say you can run figure it to 1 hour so suppose because smoke is always under the build up stage and you might see some new changes in the application etc etc and coming to sanity uh, you might take a single whole day to finish your sanity testing and uh, automation team might take at least 2 to 2 hours you can assume because smoke and sanity is done on all each and every build of application and slowly down the line once the product goes live then your smoke smoke suit execution can be completed in 20 to 30 minutes and sanity can be completed in around 40 to 50 minutes on a scale of 50 cases so once you start doing the regression there comes the real challenge for manual testers because testing 250 cases testing 250 cases means it might take approximately 4 to 5 4 to 5 working days right because because in every day considering every day a manual a tester works only 8 hours a day clear clear mega i guess you must be knowing the challenges of doing a partial regression suit yeah actually what happened uh, in partial regression uh, if we are doing manually you have to complete it and uh, after doing 250 test cases and if you got an error so it will be difficult yeah if you get some error you have to retest the complete suit again and again right 
wherever you got error then subsequent cases or you have to retest the module again and again right and in this exactly. in this case you don't know how many daily bills are there in your application or sprint no one knows the thing right how many it's a weekly build or a daily bill or a monthly build also we don't know yes or no yeah how about others uh, are we agreeing to this point How about others like Deepak, Vishal? So generally, we'll do automation on a stable environment, right? Uh, yeah. To answer to your question, Deepak, generally in some organizations, what they do is they'll start automating the test cases when the application is in development stage only. Why? Because what they do is uh, because some organizations, what they have is they don't have that much leeway time to build a build an automation suit right after go live. Well, most of the companies, what is the target is that they want to build automation framework suit by the time application is gone live. Clear? Yeah. These days, the I mean, there is the ideal situation for automation is you have to start scripting on an ideal application. But these days, the challenges is that by by the time the application is gone live, you have to have your automation suit handy in place or ready in picture. Clear? Yeah. Yes, sir. Sometimes automation can be used as a stock gap parameter to extend your contracts also. These days, if you are more and if you are experienced enough to uh, get into some service delivery metrics and documents, they use this word automation testing to extend your contracts and get some bits or deals from the companies, from the clients. Yeah. Yeah, everyone. Yes, sir. Okay. So obviously, for a partial regression testing only, you will you will take almost a week. Forty hours means it's almost a week. So regre full scale regression testing that is on a scale of thousand cases, it's one sixty hours. That means like it's a full month. Imagine a full month of regression testing. Does any organization or any company waits for a month to finish their manual full scale regression testing? I hope it's not right. Yeah, Rahul, I have a question here. Like, yeah. uh, if we have thousand uh, regression test cases, so uh, what we uh, we need to make a script, thousand scripts, like for automation, Omega. we have to make thousand Omega. scripts. Yeah, we need to be pretty smart about it. And this thousand test cases, I have some certain conditions. How many UI cases are there? How many functional cases are there? How many API cases are there? You need to have the stats also right for me. You have to bifurcate the thousand test cases for me, right? Because if you have all the UI cases like field label name validation, field name validation, what is the length of the field? What is the what type of characters that a field accepts? In order to test all this UI kind of validations, you can put all this in a single test case. This is out of my experience, I'm telling you. And if it's a functional test case, obviously you need to have a you need to have a single test case and you need to build a reusable script library for those functional test cases. And if you want to do some sort of API testing, trust me, while well, you do out of my experience, if you do API testing via automation, it is like uh, fast and furious. Like even manual testing will do slowly, but once the API test cases part is done by automation, it's like so fast, like it's like a swift, it's like fast and furious than you can take. So it's so fast that you, you can finish all your API test cases like it's in almost like 30 minutes, you can say, if you have some 200 API test cases. Okay. It so depends Rahul, on is what there any criteria? Uh, like, uh, if someone asks me uh, how you segregate the test cases, if I have a, I have number of test cases, how can I segregate that these are uh, compatible for automation and these are not? Ah uh, yes. Now you have raised a very valid point. How are this compatible for automation? How are this not compatible for automation? Is that so? Whenever uh, as automation testers. We have to make our feasibility matrix. Like, what is a feasibility matrix? Means you have the set of manual test cases that you have, right? Generally, in the ideal situation or in the ideal situation, what should happen means the manual testers should uh, judge, sense it, what can be automated and what cannot be automated. But sometimes, what is happening means given the timelines, deadlines, and the constraints and uh, uh, the management pressure of to complete the testing uh, quickly, what what is the new thing that is coming up in automation testing means 
we'll have to see the all the test cases that has been written and we have to judge which can be put into a single script which can be put in multiple scripts which is feasible which is not feasible we have to check once after receiving the kts from the manual team or the bas or the functional users clear yeah, mega okay. okay yeah so this is the real time automation engineers work it's not only about preparing a very wonderful beautiful suit but you also need to have some good communication skills or good uh, i mean he needs to have good communication skills and he needs to have a he needs to have a greater understanding of the domain so that he can also be a tester and he can also add his insights and ideas about the testing ideas testing methodologies of the application and he can add his own validations during the test cases build up also yeah yeah so in fact how automation tester should be in real time is he should have a heart of a tester and mindset of a developer he needs to play a dual role for any automation testing because at the end of the day automation testing is also a development so clear so far clear everyone yes sir how yes, about sir. others vishal mahesh all okay you can you can talk you can the floor is open guys you can ask any kind of a question or you can ask anything that's not a problem even though it's a silly question that doesn't matter we are all open and everyone is learning here okay we are all learning learning here okay without the manual automation you can't learn and we can't do the manual testing. no 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 it's uh, not like testing. it's not like that and for art you can directly jump into automation testing also directly but provided you need to have some functional domain knowledge right from manual testing team as well as the bls yeah you need to have some functional knowledge Sorry, i don't have any manual knowledge yes sir i don't have any manual, manual knowledge is not needed. Knowledge. manual knowledge is not needed sulithi ram you need to have the functional knowledge prior then manual testers will give you the set of test cases to you you have to automate those test cases because i am a person who doesn't have much of manual knowledge but still i am doing automation that means i am having i want to learn the domain functionality and i take the test cases from the manual testers and i get the kt of the test cases given by the manual testing team okay and my area of focus is on that only you need to have a tester sense tester sense means what it's not about writing the test case it's all about how well you can find the bugs in the test case what kind of permutation combinations like like you have the test steps right what you feel like you do the second step first uh, second step later third step you do first how are the how the application behaves these kind of permutations combinations you need to be doing okay so so these are the, uh, yeah, so coming to this uh, test data thing in the manual so would, uh at automation tester be responsible for uh, let's say you have some test data you will be needing that or uh, would the manual tester be giving in the companies it's a mutual understanding between the manual and automation team deeper because sometimes test data needs to be generated randomly so automation team needs to take care of it sometimes this data needs to be too specific then manual then manual testing team comes into picture and give you the give you the set of data yeah deeper Yeah, got it. Right. Yeah. Good. How about others? Anything else? Anything else that you would like to ask? Now, out of our out of the experience that we had. these are some top 5 things that we need to have for uh, before you kick start your career into test automation or before you kick start your learning into test automation i would like to say a couple of things about test automation never ever create a mess of your automation trust me you need to have a clear idea of what you are doing before you start scripting it take some time take how much of a time you want but you have a clear idea of what you want to automate get a clear idea of the functionality that you are planning to develop planning to automate and second thing avoid complex logic in your scripts what do you mean by avoid complex logic means don't create some unnecessary overhead 
through your scripting. Don't create some unnecessary mess while you're scripting. Maintain some standards, follow some methodologies. Maintain some good logic in your code, clear? Maintain some reusable logic, okay? The, for this third thing, you should always remember it in your mind, any kind of interview or wherever you feel like, there is a common question that they ask is, is it possible to automate 100%? Answer them strictly that you cannot automate application 100%. The maximum that you can automate application out of my experience is up to 80%. Trust me, the, in order to reach that 80% criteria also, you need to be so smart in your scripting. You need to be kick as uh, having a good idea of all the uh, all the domains, all kinds of uh, all kinds of like DB, API, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. You need to have a very good idea on what is what and all. Clear? Yeah? So when you are asked, fourth point, beware of automators who automators who don't understand testing. Who don't understand testing means what? It's not about the testing sense of writing test cases or scenario. You need to understand your domain. You need to always hunt for bugs. Always tester should be in such a way that he should always hunt for bugs only. You should always hunt for issues. So you for a, becoming, prior to becoming an automation tester, you need to have that sense and grasp of finding issues, getting bugs after understanding the functionality and domain of the application. How can I break the system? How can I make the make my application worry? How can I break the server of the system? Because as testers, we have the complete license to break the system, no matter what. You can do you can do any kind of testing, and if it breaks, also no one will ever shout at you or curse at you. Just because that is your right to break the server, you can break the server. Clear? Yeah? Obviously, in in good ways only you can break the server, guys. Not in a bad way. Okay. Clear, everyone? Yeah. And as I told, as I told you, test automation is a software development process. Clear? Yeah? You need to be as patient, like. Like with the developers, how patient you are. In the similarly, in the similar way, you need to be as patient as with the test automation team also, because they are also developers at the end of the day. Clear? Can you brief me on the third point, Rahul? So what exactly we can do? Uh... automation. Okay. 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 I mean, may I know which domain are you working, Deepak, currently? Finance. Okay, coming to finance. So in finances, uh, uh, since you're working for a finance side, uh, you have reports? You have this reconciliation reports, right? Yeah, we'll have graphs and reports as well. Yes, you have graphs and reports. And is it automate to, it is, is, is it really possible to automate a graph? No, right? No, it is not. Because they are, those are all come under SVG elements, canvas elements. And there won't be any text on it, right? To validate, it's just a, you will get an image text. But can can you validate graphs? No. Yeah. And for reports, you are using some Power BI tool or Tableau, right? Yes or no? Yeah, similar kind of uh, tool there. Same. Yes. Suppose assuming you that you are using Power BI tool for report generation, you can automate them, but you cannot give a hundred percent success rate while they're automating the reports on a Power BI tool because reports keeps on changing continuously. Yes or no? And you're not so sure of the data or you're not so sure of the changes that they pull in the reports. Yes or no? Yes, Rahul. And the other question I have is, uh, so let's say in the real uh, scenarios when we automate, do hmm. we take uh, data from the databases and do we automate using this JDBC? All that in yeah, that is uh, another that is a frame another framework methodology. You can you can always take the data from the databases and you can do it. That is also another approach towards building your framework. So generally, people these days use some JSON file, Excel file, or or a file that they allow to use. They can use XML file for test data. That is not a problem if your if your DB is so strong enough, like. If the if your DB connections are consistent enough, then you can take the test data from DB also. I would like to do that because if your DBs are consistent enough, the problem with DB usage means I'll tell you one disadvantage when you are using the test test source of test data as a DB because you have your you have you maintained your test data in local DB and similar set of data needs to be maintained in the client DB also. In the client DB, we don't have that kind of uh, 
permissions or access to create our own db and use it right yes or no yes sir that is the only problem with uh, using db as your source of test data because when you are moving working with client environments or client vms or client distributed environments it is uh, it is not right of us to ask a separate db for us to maintain the test data for automation sake they will simply they will simply be worried or they will create a hayward hey, they will create sometimes they will create a mess also okay okay deepak is it clear yeah rahul and the other question is uh, with you uh, coming uh, with your uh, uh, with your automation experience i wanted to understand so let's say i heard it i don't know it so the automation script has to take the api from the jira and has to raise a bug as well is it that uh, that's going on uh, selenium that doesn't have a direct integration with uh, any test management tool by the way that is a major disadvantage with selenium so you have to integrate it like uh, coming to your point i actually i actually automated my tfs application but not using apis see at the end of the day jira is a web application right Yes or no? Okay, got it. Yes, you can see so, direct integration. So your is not script there. used to raise bugs directly whenever you I have them. I can write. Yeah, I tried raising the bugs, but what is happening means the see whatever issue you find, you try to raise a bug in this format, particular format, and all. What is happening means it is creating an unnecessary unnecessary bugs. Clear? Yeah? It will create a lot of unnecessary bugs in the system. The moment you find that something is going wrong, you create a bug immediately. so that is that should not be the case right you have to have a word with your development team your manual team then you have to understand what is what because you might be at wrong sometimes right yes deepak yes sir got it how about others how about others i guess i would like to take the answer as that no one has any queries or concerns so far Yeah, hi. This is Ali yeah. speaking. Yeah, my question is, uh, how long will this course be, and is it going to be everyday course and in the afternoon? Because I'm, uh, um, I'm sorry, can you? Uh, can you repeat the last? How, how many weeks? How many weeks? Uh, this course is designed for thirty to forty-five days, Ali. I mean, correct me if my pronunciation is wrong. Okay, so thirty-two to thirty-five days. Which thirty-two means... to forty-five days, and uh, the course, the classes happen on Monday to Friday. So we okay Monday to Friday. So meaning what we can say is going to be six weeks to seven weeks. Is that correct? Yeah, you can take even take six weeks to seven weeks is the answer. Yeah. All right then. All right. So okay, every day. So it's going to be an hour. Is that right? Between yeah, forty. Yeah. Oh, an hour okay okay that's yeah, good yeah. so other question i have regarding this course are we are you going to because i have not fully seen the, the course uh, content i've not okay. seen the content however okay. is it going to be selenium 4 or we are going to be doing selenium yeah, we are using selenium 4 whenever selenium. we are working we are obviously using the selenium course features we are di okay. we are using it as part of our daily automation scripting like If you have heard the syntax for new tab creation, you have heard the syntax for Selenium relative locators with left off or right off, and you can use some um, the rectangle. If I'm not wrong, uh, you can get the particular dimensions of the element, and if you can use like for progress bar, like drag and drop. Like there are a lot of features for Selenium four, like geolocation, etc. There are a lot of things. Can't say. But we'll be covering couple of scenarios that will be useful for your interview while you're tracking the job, and if you're working, that would be useful for your real time automation. Yeah. All right. Thank you. So my question still goes further from where you stopped anyway. So the question is: uh, Are we going to be looking into Melvin using Melvin? We are or... directly starting. Whenever we are starting the coding part, we are directly starting into Melvin part, and we'll be Melvin, giving an example. That's the behavior. Um, driven development is that what we'll be looking we will be discussing about bdd cucumber after test ng okay after okay. i make your fundamentals after i go through your fundamentals of java then we'll be going through some test ng concepts followed by bdd clear yeah.
Did you mention oh. cucumber? Uh, sorry to interrupt. Okay. You said yes, um, we're going to be covering bigiri. cucumber? Yes, yes. We are oh. covering bigiri cucumber of version 6. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Okay. So, and then we sh we'll be looking into uh, Java for tester. Is that right as well? Yeah, yeah. We'll be going through the fundamentals of Java. Okay. What is, how do you create a project? How do you create a class? How do you create a package? From all those perspectives, and we'll be trying to cover all the fundamental areas that is required for automation because Java is a very big ocean. So not all concepts of Java will require for automation, right? All right then. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Adi. Uh, so Rahul, we will be covering Java as much required to crack the interview as well and for Selenium. Yes, 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 yes. For okay. the interview as well. Because I told you, as I told to Audi that the Java is a very big ocean and we'll try to I'll try to handpick uh, what are the necessary points that were respective that are essential for automation engineer. And we might stretch a bit, which, okay. which does not come under automation, but it is useful for interview. Sometimes I might ask in the interview. In those areas, we will stretch our Java concepts a bit. Okay. Okay. And uh, do we get any uh, like uh, wise, uh, on the daily basis? Do we get any assignment or doubt sessions as well? Uh, what I am planning is uh, like. We'll have the session for 45 to 50 minutes. And mm -hmm. uh, last 10 minutes, if you have some doubts, we would like to really listen to those doubts. Our first 10 minutes or last 10 minutes are like, as the course, as we uh, go through a journey, we will see like first 10 minutes or last 10 minutes, we'll have our Q&A session and uh, we'll see what can we do. Okay, okay, okay. thank you. Anything else, anyone? Can you just uh, walk through the content, uh, Rahul, if you have time? Okay, okay. Just a sec, just a sec. Just a minute, guys. I'm so sorry. Just give me a couple of a couple of seconds it takes for the page to load. So hope you have visited our, our site for the course content and details, but still for the sake of everyone, what we'll be going through is we'll see. So coming to it, uh, uh, coming to the course contents, we'll be first discussing about Selenium, what is testing, what is test automation, SDLC life cycle, and the role of automation in our SDLC life cycle, some, kind, some kinds of basic testing and importance of test automation that we have discussed today right what is the importance of test automation along with different facets of testing and case studies and facts also we have discussed right today what is the importance of test automation what are the case studies and facts means the numbers and the graphs that i have shown you that would be suffice for uh, comes under case studies and facts why selenium is being used among all the automation tools the pros and cons of it compared to other tools and uh, Set up of the basic project like you have to download the and set up the jdk files and you have to set up a basic maven project in eclipse and uh, dependencies that needs to be imported set up of web driver and launching of application web driver is the one that we use to launch any kind of application on any kind of a browser what is selenium id rc what are different types of locators like how do you locate the elements in the web application finding the elements based on the different types of experts web tables different types of weights, different types of pop-ups, actions class, how do you handle multiple windows and tabs, how do you capture different kinds of screenshots. Then coming to this Java basics, conditional looping, static, non-static, constructor, strings, 
we'll be going more in depth of the strings collections part because uh, strings and collections are like bread and butter for every automation engineer that you're working and does anyone have any doubt so uh, from an automation perspective you should always remember that strings collections exception handling are very very much important because these are the three areas there where they can twist and have asked a lot of questions yeah yeah everyone yes sir yes sir so file handling basically file handling used for capturing the data and writing it to the files reading it from the files uh, and uh, different kinds of file operations that you can do and uh, inheritance is obviously important because it's part of the oops concepts clear and as you asked test ng plugin from marketplace cucumber from marketplace how do you create a new feature file runner files combining test ng with cucumber executing cases are using runner file so actually there are more contents that need to be added like related to test ng we are going more in depth about the test ng basics and syntaxes also clear and advanced concepts of selenium web driver like our uh, different types of chrome options and desired capabilities and handling some ssl errors and uh, getting current chrome version and uh, like but if every chrome version have a separate driver version in the real time so you need to do that do those things dynamically also clear and how do you create your code from selenium code to py model as well as to page factor model and in fact we are planning to add one more concept like how do you create a properties file and how do you read then write the data from a properties file clear yeah. there are two more updates that will be happening for this syllabus where the another thing is like we'll be going more in depth about the test ng concepts and we'll be uh, we'll be adding these things like how do you read and write the values from the properties file clear clear deepak so reporting uh, part rahul what exactly we yeah, so do we attach uh, screenshots to that all that they will, those will be coming as part of your selenium screenshots will be coming up as part of your selenium concepts and reporting you can you you can the default reports will be generated with test ng as well as uh, cucumber and if time permits i can't guarantee you but if time permits i would like to show you the concept of extent reports okay if time permits at the end of the day okay clear deepak yes rahul mm, how about others do you have anything else to ask for rahul are you going rahul are you going to explain the java with the programs or for uh, going to uh, discuss the theory part no theory part this course is completely practical and i would i would show the coding right in front of you a couple of classes initially will be going to some theory like next one or two classes will be going to some theory parts because we have to see discuss about the sdlc what is the selenium pros and cons and what is selenium id and rc first well, next one or two sessions will be going in, into some bit of theory then we'll directly start and jump into the practical program okay there's nothing no theory in yes, automation sir. we have to show it practically okay. only one or two classes yes, next one or two practically i am asking about uh, java I'm yeah, yeah. Everything is live. For Java basics, basically everything is live. We will show you. And what are the important uh, topics in this? What are the important uh, topics in this uh, for Java? As I mentioned Java. prior, uh, as I mentioned prior, from a automation test, from a automation tester, from an interview point of view, strings, collections, exception handling, they will ask lot number of questions. They ask hell number of questions when it comes to okay. automation, and these are our bread and butter for in our everyday life. See, every Java concept is important that we are discussing so far, but more excess importance, like extra efforts, you need to put this in strings, collections, and exception handling. Okay. How about others? Any questions? Any queries? If you have. Any questions? Any queries so far? 
of uh, regarding to automation, regarding the course and all. No, Rahul, we are good. Yeah, I mean the silence is all. So, uh, coming to your point, Deepak, uh, the you have told me that the rate of uh, returns from automation perspective is, is really high, and I hope this graph will obviously help you know better, like how much is the cost that is spent on a manual team, an automation team, given the number of bills. Uh, for on overall uh, project life cycle till it goes live is overall life cycle of a project till it goes live or till it goes to production is 20 cycles just you can see this graph what are the costs what are the different how much is the cost that is spent by a man on a manual team on an automation team clear because as a, a project approaches nearby as the project deadlines approaches nearby, what happens means if there is no automation in the picture, they will try keep on adding the resources from different different projects and they put it into this project right in order to finish the work quickly. Yes or no, Deepak? Yes, Ra. So that's where the cost of a project increases drastically. So when you have automation in the picture, obviously the cost spent on automation tester remains the same over across a project cycle. But if but the number of manual testers will be reduced from the project as soon as it reaches the goal life. Because once a robust automation robust automation framework is built, then you will not have any other, any sort of worries because because you know that automation script is robust and it can is able to find some issues, not not all kinds of issues, but some percentage of issues the script can find. Clear? So these are some statistics of how much time that is spent by a manual team and automation team for so and so activity. Clear? And this, if you can read it, this would be more self explanatory than me explaining about this point. I hope all the points are clear for everyone, like no issues, no doubts or something like that. Yeah. Yes, sir. We are clear. No, these statistics are these statistics are pretty generic. There is no one. The statistics are not to point anyone or not to mean anyone. These are the generic statistics that we have brought it for you. So I guess we have two more minutes of time left. If you want to ask any more queries or concerns, you can always ask. Because next is all about the disadvantages of selling. I mean, disadvantages of selenium and automation. But prior to that, I would like to discuss some advantages. And I want to take it up tomorrow's class. Like, firstly, I want to discuss about selenium and its concepts. So, is it clear? Yes. Sir. Yeah. Yes. So, hope we'll regroup tomorrow and let's discuss more about the selenium. I mean, about the different automation tools in the market and why we are choosing selenium and its pros and cons so that uh, uh, you will get to know why we are choosing selenium and uh, well, if possible we'll start with the selenium id also if possible okay at the end of the day here okay 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 so thank you all for taking out your time and joining the session hope we'll all regroup tomorrow and Thank you, Rahul.